Welcome to the March 21st, 2022 meeting of the Orono Planning Commission. Uh, we start each meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I ask you to join us.
building an area for storage for all the outdoor activity stuff and the lake shore, like canoes and bikes and lawnmowers and everything else that is affiliated with owning a home and living on the lake. So we're asking for your permission to build this, I guess, you know. And it's not, we will be able to access it through the house, but only from the outside of it, so it's not going to be part of the basement or nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify from what was presented actually on the agenda, it's not an actual addition to the house, it's separate outside entrance only. Um, the garage style door that will be open to the outside. Uh, it's not a struck our neighbor's view. It is maintaining the same kind of previous deck. We are using a table railing um, to, to help maintain as much of the view as possible for our neighbors and for ourselves. Um, and we're trying to just basically keep up with our neighbors. We have two beautiful homes that have been built next, built next to us in the previous two years and just trying to maintain our property uh, to stand up to their home. Okay, and just since we're being recorded, can you state your name and address for me? I'm Julie Dion. I'm one of the residents at 1270 Wildfish Trail. All right, thank you. All right, do we have any uh, questions for that? Pretty cut and great. Yeah. All right, um, uh, thank you. Go ahead and be seated, please. All right, let's open up the uh, public hearing. All right, let's see, let's, let's bring it back to staff here and uh, for discussion. Um, Anybody have any comments on this or um, thoughts on the, uh... go ahead. I did have a question for staff. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any engineering reviews that like maybe miss, missed in our package rating? Uh, no, so it, that- It's towards the lake, towards the lake setback. Yeah, so the, um, Engineering has not reviewed this yet, as this is being built kind of into an existing grade. Um, it will it will be minimal amount of rating to do this type of project, and so it will get reviewed at the building permit side, thinking all any new additional runoff would be addressed at that grading plan review. So one will happen at the building permit, but none happen. Um, he did not look at it for the planning commission tonight. At this stage, correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, any other comments? I mean, I see this project, and my take on it is that we're ma they're not asking for anything more. They're maintaining the current setback. Um, the neighbor to the north is an extreme setback, so that kind of complicates things. So we've kind of seen these before. So um, it seems pretty um, pretty clear to me. Um, we, we've kind of. Uh, Looked at this before, and like I said, we kind of a, as, a, as a planning commission, as items come up, as long as they don't ask for anything more, and as they don't get closer to the lake with the existing structures, um, we've kind of had a tendency to favor these. So knowing that, looking for a supporting motion. Yeah, I don't structures, but it's important in the sense that if it's not attached, it's a separate building, then there's a 10-foot setback required. We want to make sure that we're, we're reviewing it consistently. So if the applicant could, could confirm, is, is the building attached to these? It's just going to be, we're going to enclose the bottom side of the deck. We're just enclosing it. We're going to build the deck and enclose but it. But you're building, you're building a room that's attached to the structure. Yes. That's, the structure. that's what we just need to do. Thank you. Yeah, I can, um, in front of you, just for clarification, they are proposing a full foundation footing wall attached to the house right here underneath the proposed deck that they're enclosing. And then I believe they know that they'll have access through the exterior only, so they're not adding a wall to connect it into the basement, but it is a full foundation wall added onto the house underneath that deck. So our landscaper said we couldn't do that. So 
he's got it set so our landscaping won't sure. work. Oh, sorry. Why don't you please uh, approach the podium and get your name and address, please. I am Travis Young and uh, 1270 Wild Hurts Trail. But, uh, so we were going to just use the landscaping wall for the wall of the shed to keep our clutter out of the yard. Okay. So instead of using the brick wall attached to the house, we decided just to go with the, what he's got. You, if you got that picture. Nothing else has been submitted. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't know that. Sorry. I guess what picture? Um, the, the actual picture of the house with the retaining wall there. Yeah. Right there. So he's got the wall already installed there. Similar blocking. Well, it's right where that concrete shows up. <clears throat> it's kind of like build a kind of a deck and it's just right on the bottom part of the driveway, you know? Too close. And then we're going to put the, the rain so it doesn't. We're just trying to make the yard clean so nobody has to see all our stuff. You know, that's nothing. You know, it's annoying when people stuff is out in the open. So it's just getting stuff out and closing the deck. It's just a, you know, it'd be a patio underneath your deck otherwise. So we yeah. just decided to enclose it so the neighbors wouldn't have to look at her. Well, here's you know, the cool stuff. Here's the complication is that if we're going to do an addition on the house, we need a foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I get it. You, okay. see, you see it as a shed, right? Well, and we're seeing it as a shed. It's got to be yeah. 10 feet away from the primary structure. Oh. So that's the complication here. Uh, would be like, so, no, I, I can clarify this. Um, what you're describing can probably get clarified with a, at the building permit because the encroachment that you're suggesting isn't going to change because you're still proposing to build the same deck, correct? As yes. shown here, you're extending this, this deck out in the same dimensions that you've submitted. So here. You have this existing deck, and you're going to bring it out to 16 feet, mm -hmm. and then you're bringing it all the way back here, the 24 feet, to your yeah. driveway. So this deck is the same dimensions. Yes. And then you'd like to enclose it with paneling versus a foundation. Yeah. So well, the, Not. it's going to be retaining wall on the back side, the house side, and then uh, we're going to just use the wall. The other wall, right? The, where the fireplace is. This is the wall of the house. Yep. And then this is retaining wall that's existing. Yep. Back here. We had wanted to originally put in the footings, um, the concrete footings, and we were told that we cannot do that. Um, and but we, but we could use like the same boulders and the landscaping rock that we were using on the front of the house to tie in everything, and that could be the wall. So it's just attached. So it's really not. 100% waterproof room. It's just, you know, you're enclosing the underside of your deck. This book. Like the rim really on the deck would be attached to the house. And then the footing, you know, every six feet or whatever, just frame that in and put some siding on it, you know? Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Like it's not, it's the footing we're using all the way of holding the walls up from the footing that we use for the deck. Right? Oh, okay. I thought you were extending the. The line of the wall of the house mm -hmm. to support the deck. So I'm like, oh, we need a foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the way I understand it is you, you're attaching it to the house, and then um, a, a normal deck, you'd have your foundation of the post coming down. Instead of that piece, you're going to use the existing wall, that landscape wall. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to build, build the deck and basically close, kind of try to, you know, because the retaining wall is 100%. Waterproof, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's still like it's outside. You're just closing the house so the neighbors don't have to see like, all the clutter. Yeah. So using a fence, we're just. Is there any way that any of this could ever be added on to? Can we put a, another structure above it? Not without a variance. I mean, they're they're asking for the average leaks or setback variance for the. Um, it, the original application was for this brick foundation wall, which was seen as that addition, and then extending the deck above it to make a larger deck space. 
and from what I'm hearing now, the scope might change a little bit in that they might drop this house edition side, and it might just be a, a average length or setback variance for extending their deck. Okay. But we can, um, you can act based on the information you've received tonight, and I can get better <coughs> clarification and plans when it goes to council for council to review. I'd like to clarify too, like the average setback originally was 75 I think it's, it's a, it sounds like it's, it sounds like staff would kind of want to take a look at it and make sure that we've confirmed the plan. Um, only thing, I don't know if we can really vote it. What was proposed today, um, as applied, we, we were willing to approve it, assuming that you're going to build an addition. But it sounds like the scope's changed where you're going to do more of a, a deck and a structure or a shed underneath it. Do you have a preference what you'd like to do? Oh, whichever way I'm saying, get you to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess at, as, it's, as, it, as it's sitting in front of us, um, uh, let's see. I'm hesitant to um, um, to call a vote because I'm not really sure what we're voting on. Um, Mr. Chair, no. if, if I may suggest, so you have a couple options. Uh, you can. Obviously, you recommend approval or recommend denial based on your understanding of the project. I'm, I'm sensing some confusion a bit on what is being requested. Uh, you could table action, allow the applicant and staff to kind of confirm or tighten up the application and then see it again um, and then make a recommendation at that stage. What Ms. Hopkin has suggested is that she could clarify that after your review but before the city council would review it. Um, but if you prefer to see that, that's an option to take. No, I think, I mean, from, from where I stand, as long as we don't exceed the uh, existing setback, whether it, whether you call it an addition or you call it a, um, a deck or a shed, um, as long as it abides by our normal um, building um, ordinances, <coughs> I'd, be, uh, I'd be willing to pursue it. I'm, I'll spend the money and build it just the way the plans are right there. So I'll put the retain, I'll take the retaining wall back out and have them four blocks or whatever you're gonna do. I'll just follow whatever you if you'll be okay with that. Because it seems like taking back and going less is gonna be a problem and delay it more. And I just I, I think it's more of a it's more of a clarification for okay. yeah. every country. Yeah. Uh, I just what we're that's from our body is do it within our, our building code. Correct. And then from the setback, what we're voting, what we'll vote on tonight is how far is it okay to build a structure um, as applied? Okay. And then if you want to work on the details before the, because we're just a advisory council, right. we'll go to city council, yep, and sure. you can button it all up, work with staff, and, and get the way you like it. Mm -hmm. so. and, uh, I think our my primary interest would be to uh, provide the, to clarify, and to provide the more complete information subject to additional clarification uh, prior to the city council if, if that's a workable thing. Okay, so not to put words in your mouth, you're saying uh, you're looking you would be willing to approve as applied with um, long enough to provide additional clarification to staff. Yes, prior yes, prior to the council yes, that's correct. Is that a motion? That's All right, well, let's see, let me just restate it. We have a motion uh, to approve as applied, as long as they provide uh, clarification to staff uh, before it goes to the uh, council meeting. And do I have a second? You do. I do. All right. 
Call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, LA 2208 passes. And this uh, item would go to the council on April 11th. <coughs> so April 11th. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. The next item on the agenda is LA 22 13. <coughs> General Design, Jeff Lingren, 2726 Caroline Avenue. Average Lake Shore setback variance. Mm -hmm. uh, staff presentation by Melanie Kurtz. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, the owners would like to construct additions on the lake side of their home. I'm sorry. Um, including a main level expansion of the kitchen and a screen porch hall, which will approach approximately 15 feet into the average lake shore setback. Um, they also plan to rebuild an existing deck with a slightly expanded footprint, um, squaring off um, some clipped edges of the, the footprint that exists today. Um, and that is 21 and a half feet into the average lake shore setback. It will go no closer to the lake than the existing deck, um, 102 feet from the ordinary high water level. Um, average lake shore setback variance is required for this project. Um, they have um, identified the, the unique shoreline, the adjacent homes, and the shape and orientation of the subject property has practical difficulties supporting their requested variance. Um, the subject property exists on kind of a bump in the shoreline. Let me see if I can get the aerial photo up here. Just to show what the, the shoreline itself looks like. Um, the um, average lake shore setback does push the home approximately 20 feet further from the lake than the neighbor to the south. The additions to the home have been designed um, so that the impact to the adjacent properties is minimized and um, protects their existing views of the lake. The new deck and stair will go no closer to the lake than existing. Um, because of this average lake shore setback line crossing through the property, um, no improvements can be constructed on the lake side of the home without variances. Um, supportive comments have been received from the affected neighbors on each side of the property. Those are included in the packet as Exhibit H. Regarding the uh, practical difficulty, staff agrees that the location of the existing home with respect to the shoreline and adjacent homes do contribute to practical difficulty <coughs> on this property. Staff supports um, and recommends approval of the average lake shore setback variance as requested. I can, um, I have the plans if you'd like to see them. Um, there's some existing aerial photos of the property that the applicant is here, and um, that's all I have. All right, um, any questions for staff? I have one. Um, can you show me the existing structure? I see the proposed. Yes. House currently, okay. and then the deck exists in the same footprint. These corners are clipped, okay. um, and then this addition partially, the screen porch is partially in the setback, and this balcony is conforming. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to clarify. So, okay, thank you. All right, since we have no other questions for staff, um, is the application uh, applicants present? And would like to come forward. Now's the time. <clears throat> and as a come, please state your name and address. Sure. Uh, Jeff Lindgren, uh, 6514, 108th Trail in Brooklyn Park. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Um, we've been working with the city to uh, try to put together a plan that works for them and also how we want to see it with this, how the city sees it from the zoning standpoint. Um, the and just to clarify, so the existing deck that's there is actually a a habitable porch underneath it. And there, there might be some there might be some pictures in the back uh, from the back that show it. So um, it's actually enclosed and heated, 
and the uh, used it uh, uh, owners before my clients had used it for some type of a sunroom, perhaps. Um, and which is it's actually um, falling apart and leaking very uh, profusely. So uh, that's uh, my own my homeowners uh, bought it in the fall and have not moved in yet. So we are trying to update it for them so that they can live in it. Um, and this is where we're trying to make that uh, situation for the porch to be up on the main level and improve the quality of that space as well. So, um, but we have our, our uh, average length shorter setback that we're dealing with. And that's just uh, due to the timing of different projects that have been built on either side. Uh, but we've had full support with our neighbors. Um, and the uniqueness of their properties um, their views are actually um, obtuse of what ours are. Uh, so they don't even see our house given the, how the orientation of the homes are. They want their facing opposite directions. So. But I think the information and what Melanie has provided uh, is an initial open for it and answer questions. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Is there practical difficulty in this? I four paragraphs probably ahead of that. Oh, sorry. Is there practical difficulty in this? Uh, they, they have, um, they've identified the shoreline, the adjacent homes, right. and the orientation of the property, and staff would um, tend to agree with that. Which, which I use and love to call meander, yeah. away from meander. But, but I, I see that. I, I tend to agree with staff's determination on this. Uh, Yep. I also feel this is a uh, reasonable use of the property. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, so often we're asked, uh, you know, does this uh, alter the essential character of the neighborhood? But our applicant points out, and the staff points out, that uh, this is a, uh, many of the other uh, neighboring homes have already been upgraded, and this one has not yet, but they are proposing to do so. So. It, in effect, they are bringing this home uh, closer to being uh, at the level of the neighborhood. So uh, uh, I think that's a plus. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, not, not going um, to, they're not being too short or anything. They're being pretty conservative in their request. So I'd be, I'd be in favor of supporting as well. That said, um, we have a, I'm going to hear the um, final motion. Uh, I would move to approve the LA 22113, uh, Jeff, uh, 27, 2726, uh, Carolyn County, based on uh, staff's recommendation and the additional explanations that we just received. All right, a motion by Mr. Libby. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes. 
but this one will also go on paper for a month or two. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. I just got a quick general question. Can I ask sure. it? Nothing to do with it. Well, a little bit. But it, it was your comment. Uh, Jane and I are 1386 West Point Road. We just made a comment that um, if it doesn't change the character of the neighborhood, that's something to consider. You know, we're ready to send that. I mean, uh, how, how much does that weigh in your decision? Well, it, I, I, it's just a part of it, but uh, not the entire part by any means. Uh, uh, it, it, it simply builds on the based on the um, layout of the existing home and also the layout of the geography of the lot. Uh, sure, sure. So it's basically like what happened here because it really didn't change the character much. You just kind of closing something or whatever. And it's not really that, you know, that, that's helpful to you guys to make the choice to approve it. Is that fair enough? Yeah, I mean, I think that all people are small, but if it was two stories or something like that, it would be probably a head break. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, other business. Um, we have this uh, city council schedule. Uh, yeah, just very briefly, we, we, we publish every year the liaison from the planning commission to the city council for the first meeting of the month. The idea there is you be available in case there's any, <clears throat> any questions that the council has of you. Uh, and so I put that schedule together. There's no motion required on your part to provide that information. Okay. All right. Um, any uh, discussion on that? Okay. The delegate attorneys. So um, uh, I guess the next item is uh, update on the March 14th. 2022 City Council meeting. Yeah, so on March 14th, the City Council reviewed the recommendations from your February meeting. Um, one item was uh, tabled by the City Council that that was the, uh, the variance for hardcover and late setback for retaining wall on, at 1720 Bowles Point. That was tabled by the Council, allowing the applicant to retool their plan a bit. Uh, the variance at uh, 2590 Watertown Road, you recommended the denial. They withdrew their application there made some modifications to the plan to fit within the, the uh, setback requirements. Uh, the variance for area width and size at, uh, at 65 subs, uh, subs bay or subs, subs. Uh, that was approved on consent by the city council. They did um, conform to that size setback in the general discussions with me that you just recommended. Uh, and then the sketch plan at 1245 Arbor Street, uh, the plan here at the City Council gave direction on that. There was not a lot of support to weigh the, uh, the lot size or width requirements. So I, it's doubtful that they'll come forward with another subdivision that can conquer that is not conforming, but uh, they did get their direction uh, from the City Council. Yeah, very well. All right, that is all we have on the agenda. Okay, with that, any other comments? Any other things you want to bring to the discussion? 
Well, your name. Oh, uh, he didn't hear the news today. The judge ruled okay. that Paul needs to move it in the next 10 days. And the county's already been talking to his lawyers. They're going to work on it Thursday. I'm going to live stream that for everybody. And, oh, yeah, it's going way to his place in Spring Park. Spring Park uh, had to admit that they never filed the CUP downtown, so it doesn't exist. And said because that's a marina type business, it can store it. Even though they were against it and conspired up ahead of time, they were forced by reality to follow their code. That's fantastic. Yeah. Interesting. It is. It is interesting. I'm involved with Steamboat. Oh, okay, cool. And I don't know how they get that one down the road. The Steamboat's 27 foot high. Right. You can't go into power lines or anything like that. Well, they took the flybridge off. And I think, I think with the flybridge off, they're comfortable getting all the under the electric wire. they got to push them up a little bit because there's only three sets. And then they're just going to split all around the one set of stoplights. For, for Spring Park. Yeah. But if they were going to go down the river, weren't they? Uh, they actually, the goal is to bring up Lake Superior. It, it was going to go down the river and then to Texas, but that all fell apart. Well, these guys want to take it up to Superior. But I'm not well. Steamboat's got a lot of complications, but we will deal with it. <laughs> right, you know, uh, yeah. Well, but that's what Paul's doing too, and you know, he just wants to get that thing on level land and weigh it, so he can prove how much it weighs. And he's gonna let me film that, <laughs> so he can all see. We've got records from 1908. Wow. And weights back then. Yeah. But when it was rebuilt, a lot of structure changed, and different boilers and all that kind of stuff. How much does that thing weigh? About 110,000 pounds. Wow. But we're going to have it scanned, digital or electronic scan, and then we'll we know where the water line is, so we know the displacement. Yeah. On basis of that volume. Sure. We'll scan the boat, so we're have, the have a really good guesstimate. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs>
change the direction.